Hey guys, how's it going? Joe here again in my shop. Um, got a little video series for you here, two parts, uh, on how to replace the short block in a steel MS250 chainsaw. Now, <laughs> this uh, may not be uh, very entertaining for a lot of people. It's mostly informational about uh, what's involved in dealing with chainsaws and um, you know people wonder you know they bring me their chainsaw and they think like you know hey uh, it doesn't work but it should only cost me like 20 bucks to have it fixed they have no concept of what is involved in working on chainsaws you know I work on a lot of uh, stuff yard tractors lawn mowers you know all types of stuff like that generators and for me working on chainsaws is literally the hardest thing they are engineered to the extent that they are virtually impossible to work on so uh, this may not be something you want to watch uh, there's two parts to it it's uh, each parts about 30 minutes long and it's edited a lot um, so that you can uh, you know only see like the the pertinent parts of uh, putting this thing together um, basically what happened was is, uh, somebody brought us a steel MS 250 chainsaw said uh, wouldn't run and uh, you know we did the usual checks you know looking at the carb and stuff like that and uh, finally did a compression check and found out the thing only had like 50 psi of compression which is nothing uh, so we uh, put a short block in it for him now you know the short block itself was like 90 bucks and then the amount of time it took to disassemble the chainsaw clean all the crap out of it uh, put the whole thing back together again, tune it, and get it going is probably on the order of about four or five hours. Uh, I didn't time it, but that's about how long it took. And I worked on this thing over a couple of days because we had to order parts for it and, uh, you know, get, get you know, I, I took the car apart, cleaned it, you know. I mean, it's basically a new chainsaw. So, um... You know, like I said, I mean, this may be not everybody's cup of tea to watch this. Um, it's primarily informational for people who uh, want to see what's inside of a chainsaw and what's involved in uh, repli basically rebuilding the thing from the studs up. So uh, I hope you enjoy it. And uh, people who are contemplating doing this, I hope that you find it useful uh, information to help you get it back together again. Uh, so uh, here we go. Okay, well, we got a steel MS250C chainsaw here that uh, was having some big problems starting. Once you got it started, it ran, but um, after checking some things out, we found out what the problem was. So I'm uh, taking it apart. And this part right here is what is called a short block. And basically it's the engine. Um, the problem with this is, is it's got low compression. Um, either they ran it without enough oil or it got too hot whatever it's supposed to have about 175 psi compression and it's got about 50 so we ordered the short block fortunately not too expensive uh, it's about 89 bucks for this whole thing here and I'm gonna show you uh, what goes on with this and why it's no good so Okay, so got the cylinder here, and 
Um, it it's not too bad. I mean, this thing could be honed out again. Um, there's a couple little uh, scuffs in here, which uh, I can try to show you. But um, this is the real problem right here. Is this uh, all of this scoring right here? I'll see if I can uh, get a close up of this for you. But um, this is where the compression was leaking right around these rings. So let me uh, let me throw the close up lens on here and uh, see if I can get you a better picture of this. Okay, so here's the piston, and you can see that this is all scored up right here, but that's really not the problem. The problem is these rings. Um, you can see if I move them back and forth, they're all scored up right here. And if you look inside of the cylinder, let me get a light here. see right right there the cylinder is all scored up too I think you can see that so that's causing a massive compression leak um, the short block um, you could buy two of two things you could buy um, just the cylinder and the piston and the rings or and that costs about 75 bucks or you can buy this entire thing including the crank seals the bearings uh, the connecting rod the piston the rings even the spark plug for like I want to say it was like 80 bucks, 85 bucks, 90 bucks, something in that range. They come as a kit. Now, you can't buy this stuff from steel directly unless you buy all the pieces separately. But um, they make kits. Like, these things wear out, and uh, they make rebuild kits. And uh, we're getting ours from H&L, which is a pretty uh, big online company for this kind of stuff. So when we get these parts, um, should be a couple days, I'm going to uh, put this engine back together and put the chainsaw back together and get her running again. And hopefully, instead of having a half a horsepower, she's going to have three again. This is a three horsepower chainsaw. Okay? All right. A couple days later, let's see what Mr. FedEx has brought us for our steel chainsaw. Crankshaft, connecting rod, crankshaft, bearings. Oh yeah. See how this compares to the original. Where did I put that thing? Hang on, let me see if I can dig it out. Here it is. Hmm. 
Okay. Well, it's a little different, but uh, looks like it's going to work. Let me put that back in here for safekeeping. Keep it clean. Got a couple bearings here. Some seals. Spark plug. Case bottom end. I guess that's right. Uh, wrist pin bearing. Cylinder assembly. Okay, it looks like there's some. Yeah, pistons in here, rings. It's a high quality cylinder. <coughs> well, it's pretty much like the same thing. All right. So, um, quality cylinder, high quality cylinder. All right. So, We'll save this for future reference. And it goes this way. We'll save that for reference. And we will start putting our chainsaw together. Which is that huge pile of parts. Right. Pretty much the whole engine. Okay. Pin rings. There's two of them in there. Yep, there's two of them in here. Okay. What's this? Hmm. Okay. I think we have everything here that we need except some assembly lube. Okay, what I like to use when I'm putting together engines is this Federal Mogul Sealed Power Assembly Lube. This stuff uh, works real good and sticks and uh, keeps bad stuff from happening to good things. So, first thing we're going to do here is assemble the rings onto the piston. specific way which is why I saved this okay so they go with the wide part up can you see this yes you can 
Okay, so leave this one on. Okay, and then you rotate that so it's in line with the pin. I'm going to put the other one on now. Okay, just like that. And get our crankshaft out. And our needle bearing. this one and we copy it the ring gaps are going to be right here and we're going to put some assembly lube on this baby Get all happy with some good green juice here. And I'm going to insert that into the crankshaft. And then we're going to put the piston and insert the wrist pin. go okay now what we're gonna do is put these little snap rings in Now we got our whole uh, thing done here. And it looks just like this one. Okay. Now what we're going to do is push our bearings onto this crankshaft. This one on. Oh, 
this one you gotta be careful because there's a snap ring groove here and you don't want to damage this seal going over it so okay we got it on and that was not very much fun this one ought to be a lot easier because it's going up on a tape that all gooped up here yeah all right there we go okay so we are getting ready now to put this thing back together and what I did in the meantime here is I got some high temperature RTV and I put a bead of it around here I'll let it and then I took some screws these are not the right screws for this but I took some screws and I screwed them in here clamped this down so it's been uh, quite a while the stuff should have set up by now so we're going to remove these screws and start assembling this chainsaw So when I take these screws out of here, I mean, the only thing that's really going to be holding the bottom of this thing on is the RTV. So i got to be really careful not to break the seal as I'm putting this thing into the saw body. But it shouldn't be too big of a deal, so we'll see how it goes. If, uh, if I mess the seal up... I'll just take it apart, scrape the old stuff off, and put some new stuff on. But uh, the direction said, <clears throat> put the uh, RTV on there, uh, let it tack up for an hour, and then uh, apply the torque, and then let it sit for 24. So... Hopefully this is good enough at this point. And uh, one other thing I noticed here that's there is a slight difference um, on the original steel one. It took one of these bolts right here. Um, you know the standard steel uh, coarse thread bolt the um, the new one it had this uh, metric screw in it which I just happen to have one so we'll use that but that is a difference so anyway let me bring in the, uh, the main saw body here and get this in an approximate location gentle here okay I'm holding this together with my hand here just to make sure I don't pop the seal and there it's in so now um, got my coffee can full of stuff and I'm gonna find those four long bolts can o chainsaw okay so these these are the bolts right here that hold the engine into this frame here and again before I get this bolted in I'm going to be very careful not to um, pop this RTV seal here and get these started Okay. 
trying to keep this in frame. Uh, okay. All right, so there we are, the engine's in place. Now this little thing is for the kill switch, so it has to go in there. All right, now we gotta put this plate on. Still in frame here. Yeah, these wires go up on the slot. Beautiful. Okay. Okay, that's the way that wants to look with the spark plug wire going up in that slot and these two kill wires coming up here. Okay, now what I'm going to do is put on this little impulse tube here. And this is really important. It goes right on that nipple there. That's what gets a fuel pump going on the carb. Okay, the next thing, um, I'm trying to decide whether I should put the flywheel and clutch on here. These two wires have to go to this little screw boss right here. And I'm going to have to find my metric screw that I had dug out. There it is. Put these on. 